Hello, this evening uh, we're uh, in Tuscany again and we're having what is probably my favorite county and it's uh, by Felsina. We've had a county reserva from them before. This is the County Classical Reserva Rancia, 2010 by Felsina again. Rancia is basically a single vineyard a county uh, made in the Rancia vineyard which um, they bought as they were buying vineyards, the Felsina family in the 60s, the 70s and the 80s, they bought this vineyard. Uh, and uh, this is a historic uh, place. You know, there was a, a house there and a cellar, you know, going back a long time. And they decided to make a single vineyard wine. It's about 400 meter elevation facing Southwest. It's got its own characteristics and the, uh, you know, just to go back to the Felsina family, they really built quite a name in the last 60 years. What they, the, their property went back, you know, that property itself went back all the way to the Dukes of Florence who used to grow olives there. And olive is still a big part of what Felsina uh, does, so what they grow. So they make a lot of olive oil and a lot of wine, and that's basically what they do. They have several uh, grades we discussed. They have the Chianti, the Chianti Classico, the Reserva. The Rancia is the one single vineyard county. And it's like the other uh, Reserva. It's gotta be aged uh, you know, in, in uh, barrels for 18 to 20 months and six months in a bottle. Uh, they, use, uh, they use, it's de-stemmed. They use stainless steel for the maceration and the fermentation. It's pumped over uh, regularly. So it's kind of a mix of modern and, and uh, uh, traditional methods, it's hand-picked uh, and they kind of start the picking in October, at least they used to. So it's a little bit of a later harvest uh, for, for, these, for these grapes. And uh, uh, the other wines they make is the, they have a Gran Seleccione, Seleccione, which is supposed to be even fancier. You don't find it, I don't know that I've had it. They make a Cabernet called Maestro, 100% Cabernet Sauvignon. And they make the Fontaloro, which uh, I've had quite often. I don't think we've done a tasting on that. That's also 100% Sangiovese, but it's a multi, it's not even a county, it's a cross vineyards in the region that they pick basically and they mix, you know, to create this uh, blend. Now, the, the, the vines in the Felsina, in, sorry, in Rancia, are kind of interesting because they've kind of been planted and mixed over time uh, to mix a lot of different clones. They're basically in the 80s, there were some uh, vines there, different clones, different genetics. They figured which ones were doing the best and they recombined them and they keep uh, doing the plantings in that method, which is not basically just grabbing one clone or two clone and carpeting the vineyard with it, but continuing this massaging the, you know, uh, of, of the, the genes and the, and the clones to keep selecting the most successful ones and replanting based on those measures. It's just, you know, I don't know what it does to the, to the wine, to be honest, but this is kind of what they've decided to do. Anyway, if we look at the color, this is a 2010, so it's got a bit of age on it. If you look just at the edge of the, of the red, you see a little bit of an orange, you know, hue. And what's interesting here is you do, you do have that ring, but you almost have the, the, the wine, it's so viscous, like you almost, see it almost like an oil film on top. It's got a, almost like a like two layers, like something very smooth and very still on top and the wine underneath. And you can almost see that in the, in the color, the color at the top is very, very uh, clear. And then you do have the deep, rich red, you know, from the county underneath. Uh, so so it's just, just found it's a very interesting observation and, and uh, not sure that it means anything for the wine itself. Uh, maybe it's uh, all the olive oil they make. Anyway, uh, on the nose you do you do get the the really typical emblematic, if you want, cherry and earth that you get from County, uh, and that to me is very specific. It's really that sort of combination of of uh, again fruit and dirt, if you want, and they kind of mix in the nose. Which sort of makes it that the county, the, even the, the greatest counties, are never going to be sort of refined, classic.
classic wines in the in in the way of a Bordeaux maybe or a Burgundy. They are from the earth. They're a little bit coarse. They're a little bit more vigorous. They just have this sort of they have a sense of place. You think of those hills if you've been there, or if you've seen pictures. You think of the the the, the different you know way the sun rises over these hills from different you know depending on the exposure. And you kind of have a notion of really the earth that uh, that is there, and that's really just what I what I get when I think of Chianti, and that's what reinforced in this particular in this particular nose. It's fourteen percent alcohol, but it doesn't really come through on the nose. It's just again the cherry, the earth, and a little bit of that coarseness that you can detect. There's a little bit of pepperiness, but that maybe it's going to be more clear on the, in the mouth. Mm. Mm. Sour, more sour on the cherry, and um, you got a little bit of that, a little bit of licorice. You got the pepper that I described earlier. Again, it's all very faint, but the the overwhelming notion is one of of sour cherries, dark sour cherries, and and uh, and earth. You know, the earthiness without being overwhelming but it's there it's the wine of the earth as we said the the attack is very is very light you don't need but the finish and the the sort of what it leaves behind it's just a combination of tannins cherry uh, uh, strong imprint it's a wine of personality i just really really like these wines uh, again it's at the top end here of a what a chianti reserva uh, but it's it's a bit it's a bit more restrained, a bit more but more forceful at the same time on the uh, uh, a bit more a little bit more restrained on the fruit, but it's all there. It's not exu as exuberant if you want as a younger San Juisto, which we had together, but it's more uh, just a little bit more um, you know it's got a little bit more personality I would say, and it's just they're both amazing and in different ways, and that's the beauty of having. A variation here, but this I would say is very emblematic of a top notch Chianti, everything that you'd expect uh, in that for uh, half the price of a really good Brunello. Uh, we're talking here about high dollars, of course, but still, this is just a, an incredible wine. Uh, anybody who likes Brunello, I would advise you to try uh, one of these. Cheers.